the market is ever changing and sometimes it's supply and demand sometimes it's pressure so there's a lot of people interested in something because it's been advertised or in the news or a number of different but it always comes back to sometimes the basics the value per and tonight after the last 10 days two weeks of looking at just where is the silver pocket that has the best value i'm pretty sure we nailed it look at this one So we're looking at silver eagles, right? Which is the one ounce silver of the day. And my competition's at $59, $69 for a one ounce silver, right? Uh, which is not a horrible price. It's a supply and demand thing. And when supply gets tough, prices go up. We see that everywhere else in the world as well. And then we look at the staples. Before the Silver Eagle program, it was 90% US coin silver. That was how non 10 ounce bars non 20 ounce bars non kilo bars that's how people collected or stored silver was just getting 90 percent 1964 back basically and again the misnomer on silver is the fact that in 1965 we stopped making dimes and quarters in silver we continued Kennedy's until 1970 clad took over there so at this time in history, since the silver dollar was pulled in 1935, the peace dollar, we had three coins in circulation. We had a dime, we had a quarter, and then we had a half dollar. Those were the three staples. And when you look at them on a coin by coin basis, they all have their silver content. The question always comes down to though, which one of these has the best relationship for weight to silver? And we're always working with that. Sometimes it's dimes. Sometimes it's half dollars. Well, tonight, it's not even a question mark on quarters. They're all a multiple of each other. And let me explain why I'm saying that. Right now, if you're looking for Roosevelt dimes, right? Roosevelt dimes were made from 1946 until 1964. Almost 20 years. We had P's, D's, and S's. It was the workhorse, right? The lowest, smallest silver coin in circulation. Competition for uncirculated dimes right now is six to seven dollars, upwards of eight dollars each. So we just take six dollars, right? And a dime is 2.5 into a quarter. So at six dollars times two is 12 plus a half is 15 dollars for the same silver weight this quarter has. Now I'm not saying it's the absolute, but I'm just saying just for simple comparisons, that's where you can look. Well, then the other is looking at a quarter to a half dollar, right? A half dollar right now, whether it's a Franklin or the 64 Kennedy, we're looking at anywhere from 35 to $45 for an uncirculated coin. Circulated's different. Well, two quarters make up a half. So if a half dollar is, which just say $30, right? A quarter then should be 15. So, just by looking at this as a silver value for uncirculated 90%, this one, pretty darn special. We're at $8.95 tonight. And our coins all range from the 50s and 60s. That's the grouping we have. There's a mixture of P's and D's in that grouping. As you can see right there, there's a mint mark above the E and the R in quarter. It's just a great deal. So let's talk about the Washington quarter for a minute, shall we? So in 1932, we bring out a one-year-only Washington Quarter. It's to celebrate the anniversary of our first president, and we stopped making the Standing Liberty Quarter that year. We loved it so much, and there was so much talk and chatter on it, that in 1934, two years later, they brought it back as the staple quarter, the quarter of the realm. And it's still made today. And all the major coin programs the U.S. Mint puts together are based on, again, the Washington Quarter. Now, these are called the Eagle Reverse. This reverse existed until 1998. In 1999, we started the state quarters. The reverse changed. Then we had the national parks. The reverse changed. We had the 2021 Washington. That unique coin, the reverse changed. And now we're in the Women Making History program. The reverses are changing. The silver Washington quarters, 90%, ended in 1964. Now, in 
Now the graphics says up to 10 different. I know we're showing you a couple more than that. A couple of them are lower quantities than others, and based on the rush of people wanting 10 or more, we might have to limit ourselves to only 10. So if you want 15, trust me, for the value at $8.95 each, it is an outright steal. An outright steal. Even if you equate it to the Silver Eagle, which is one pure ounce, and they're at $59, $69, five of these quarters is $45. I just think it's a great place, and I love the series anyways. Beautiful, clean, and with uncirculated coins, what a value. $8.95. Uh, where are our competitors? Well, they range from being in the mid-20s to the high-20s. On the 63s and 64s, the last two years they made these. But again, if we give you a 63 P and a D and a 64 P and a D, that's four coins. There are six other coins. And those are all over 30 bucks. We're at $8.95. That's the winner any way you slice it. It's just a great opportunity on 90%. And, it, and I, I'm a firm believer in circulated 90%. I'm a big believer in uncirculated. Quality is the number one always. Guys, let's put that 30 second clock up, please. We're getting down to our last couple of groupings. And where I was going with that is very simply this. In real estate, what's the mantra? Location, location, location. Any collectible, a sports card, a comic book, a collectible coin, a stamp. What is the number one mantra? Quality, quality, quality. So when you can get quality and all the other attributes, in this case, 90% silver, etc., tied together and still have a crazy low price, you just get a great deal. So again, thank you for being with us. Phones are very busy, remember, avccoins.com, but it's time for me to be moving on.